boys and girls got a whiteboard so that we can have lessons similar to the ones we had in the classroom before all of this. Okay, so hopefully it'll be easier for you to understand and to get a hold of the learning. With this video, I would recommend that you um, watch it once, watch it a second time and write down your own mind map and the ideas and the concepts as I'm going through it, okay? And if there are areas like um, when we look at conduction, that you could go and do a little experiment, and I'll talk you through that when I'm coming to that, then stop the video, go and do that, and come back and finish the video and do your mind map. It's the best way to, to keep all of this in your mind and to learn this, okay? We went over the heat um, topic too quickly, so I'm recapping this video and the next video, and it's just some key ideas that will stand you in good stead for the future learning. What you need to remember is that this is an introduction almost for you for chemistry and physics, which you will learn separately as you go further up through the school. And it gives you the scientific thinking, looking at things a little bit more closely. And it, be it begins to give you the idea of how do we use the sciences, biology, um, chemistry, physics, the language sciences, everything, how do we use that to understand the world around us? Okay, so what we're going to look at just now, the other thing I would say is you can make the picture bigger if you can't see the writing, because I think I write quite small. Um, can you think about heat energy? The transfer of heat and anything you've learned about heat so far, because I think you learned quite a lot. So let's just go over it, revive it and make sense of it, okay? So first thing I would say about heat is energy. Then I would say transfer of heat. But also I would put down the temperature, how we measure heat. Okay, so let's begin with transfer of heat. These we will come to, okay? So can you think, first of all, there's three ways that heat is transferred. Can you think of the three methods of heat transfer that you have looked at so far? Okay. Okay, first one. Conduction, good. Okay, con duct -tion. Okay, conduction. What does it mean? Can you think of uh, an experiment or an example of conduction for heat transfer? Good. But first, what is heat conduction? How? What does that mean? How is the heat transferred because of conduction? What must happen? Yeah, you need the surfaces, you need the objects to come into contact. Okay, so I want you to think about the experiment, and I'm going to do one here. Um, a pan of cold water. Okay, here's the handle. Cold water up to here. So this is cold water just now. And here's your stove. Here's your stove, okay, and you're cooking, it's a very small stove, but anyway. So, you switch on the um, stove, the cooker, and this cooker becomes hot. The heat transfers to the pot through direct, I should put that here, direct contact through direct contact. So the metal bottom of the pan is directly con con contacting the top of the stove plate where the heat is. So the heat transfers into the bottom of the uh, metal pan. So that's your first one, into the base of your pan. This is full of water. The heat, now remember, this is the key idea about heat energy, heat, transfers, where does it transfer? Who can tell us? It transfers to colder 
object. Okay, so the heat will trans transfer to a colder object. Okay, so this is cold water, there is heat here, the heat will transfer into the water and this water here becomes hot and it is still cold initially as we begin. Okay, as we're starting this, initially that's how it goes. Now, can you describe what happens in the water? If you can ex explain what happens when it when it's boiling, what does it look like? It's full of bubbles, it's moving. And that is the energy moving up through it via not conduction, but convection. Good, convection. Okay, so now here we've got conduction. And then we've got convection, heat transfer. Now, what we've got to do is look at everything in our world is made of molecules, which are atoms that have stuck together to create a particular compound. Okay, whether it's a liquid, whether it's a gas, whether it's a solid, molecules come together. The atoms come together to form molecules. Molecules are bigger than atoms. Atoms is a smaller word, so you can remember it's a smaller thing than a molecule. Atoms are the smallest particles that we look at. Um, there are uh, particles within the atom, but we are just going to be considering atoms. Now, a single raindrop has approximately 300 billion, billion atoms inside it okay so to make one tiny raindrop you need approximately 300 billion billion atoms so we cannot see atoms they are so tiny okay so we get atoms can anyone name any 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 uh, element of the periodic table um, that is an atom okay we've got oxygen i'm going to look at water because we've got water in the pan so we've got oxygen and we've got hydrogen it's just a little bit smaller what is the chemical compound for water? Can anyone think of what that is? I know we haven't done anything like this, but some of you have read about this and some of you know that H2O equals one water molecule. Okay. So what does that mean? So here's one oxygen, here's one hydrogen. Hydrogen two, so two of those joined with one, there's only one, one oxygen, so if you join that on there, that's not exactly what a molecule looks like, but I'm just drawing this for an example, okay? So this is one water molecule made up of atoms, three atoms, okay? But water, when you've got water, there's billions of molecules and trillions of atoms, okay? So remember that, remember this, okay? So when this all happens, heat, when, um, any, when any um, object begins to heat or is heat, or has heat developing within it, these atoms begin to move. They have kinetic energy and that means movement. Kinetic is moving energy, okay? So that means they start to bounce and they bounce off each other and they move very, very, the hotter they are, the more they will move within their substance. With gases and liquids, the space occupied will increase, okay? So there it is, it expands and so does that. But solids, they do also get a little bit bigger, but it's, very difficult for us to see the expansion here and here. The gases, we get, we'll come to that and you can see that a little bit easier. But solids, they do expand, but we cannot, and liquids, we cannot really um, see it with the naked eye. Okay, so here, the stove, as it's getting hot, the cooker, the, the metal will get fractionally bigger, but we can't detect it. The bottom of the pan will get slightly bigger. 
the volume of the water as it comes to boiling point will be greater than when it was cold water, but we don't actually, we can't, we don't generally measure boiling water. It's a very dangerous thing to do at our stage. Um, and then when, when water is boiling, we get steam off the top and you can see that the steam, the atoms are going like that. They're not staying in one bit, they, they, they come off, okay. The other thing to remember is that heat always rises. Have we got that? No, heat rises. That's a vital part of this, rises. Okay, so the heat is coming up to here, then it gets hotter. Now, how does that get warm? If the cold does not stay at the top, as the water molecules, so here is cold water. Okay, here are some molecules for cold water. Now, remember, these are not accurate diagrams of molecules, they're just representative. Okay, so the molecules in cold water are vibrating, but they're not moving that much. Okay, they're not bouncing about, they're not bouncing off each other. They're pretty close together. Okay, so there they are in the cold water, so that's cold. When it's hot, I'll just use the four again, you will get more space between these because remember they're moving, they're bouncing off each other and they are full of energy. So imagine yourself when you're bored and you're full of energy, you move about and you have, you know, you, 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 you don't stay in the same place often. Okay, so there's, that's water. Now this is a very rough diagram. And then hot water, then when we get to the steam, the molecules move even further apart, okay? So, and this, they, it takes up more volume, it's the same amount, but they're just spaced out, okay? So be aware of that. It's the same amount of molecules and atoms, but they're just spaced out because of the energy and movement of the molecules, okay, the, the atoms. Um, so here is the volume of water there. Here is the volume of water here. And here is the volume of water here. So you can see there is, this is exaggerated, it's slight differences, this is much more. Okay, so what happens here? We have got the molecules quite far apart down here. Okay, they're quite far apart down here. But up here where the water is still cold, they are still close together. Okay, and you know that heat rises. So these hot molecules go up. And as they come up, the um, cold molecules go down, but you can see that these are far apart and these are close together. We call something that's close together dense. So it's, a, it's similar to the word thick, a synonym for thick, but it's not the same kind of idea. If you think of tomato sauce and you think of vinegar or think of water, tomato sauce is very dense. Okay, and this is, it means it's, the molecules are close together. So these molecules are dense and that would give them a heaviness as well, but the heat is rising, so it's taking the volume up here and these go down. So when you're boiling water, it goes up and then the cold comes down until, remember that transfer of heat, you reach um, heat equi, Remember the same equilibrium, okay, level, same level. So think about a cup of tea in your house and you put a, a cold spoon into your cup of tea. What happens to the spoon? It is heated by the water. The transfer of water goes from the warm thing to the cold thing. So the spoon heats up. So tea plus spoon plus time equals hot spoon and tea. Now, <clears throat> back to this again, heat transfers to colder ob ob um, objects. Once we reach both of them being the same um, temperature, so same temperature it 
they have reached heat equilibrium and then we've got to consider the air. Okay, the air is cooler, so the heat from these will then move into the air. It will then be con convection into the air until, so then you've got the air and time equals cold tea. Okay, because the cup of tea is never going to warm up the whole room. It's simply not got enough heat. It's not got enough atoms. It's too small. The room is too big. Okay, so the tea will be cold and that, that's, you will not really be able to detect the difference in heat in the air. Okay, so this is here and then we've got the convection coming up here as the steam comes up. Okay, and they get more and more spaced out. There we have it. The next, the last one, we've got transfer of heat, conduction, convection, and then we've got, what's the last one? From the sun is a good example, radiation. Radiation. Okay, so main source is from the sun. Okay, so convection, I'm just going to put in here, is um, movement. Okay, so the hot air or material, whether it's liquid or whatever, moves and gives heat to the colder. See that liquids and gases. Okay, so radiation from the sun. Radiation is heat that we feel. Now, how does this heat come from the sun? Okay, we've got sunlight, we're looking at sunlight energy. You've also got heat coming from the sun. What rays or waves carry that heat? Infrared, good, infrared. Infrared, infrared, two R's, infrared rays. They transfer the heat from the sun all those miles away, the kilometers. And um, they transfer the heat, sorry, transfer the heat from the sun to whatever object it touches. If you go outside, your car will be hot, the stones will be hot, everything that the sun is, the, the light, the heat of the sun can um, connect with is hot, okay, or warm. You will feel the difference to something that's in the shade where the sun hasn't been, okay. So you've got infrared light. This is invisible, remember? So it's what we feel. So we've got conduction, where, where they're in contact, convection, where there's movement, and then we've got radiation, where the infrared and visible uh, rays, and we can feel the heat. Okay, so contact, movement, and actual touch. Okay, so another thing that we need to look at is temperature. How do we measure how much heat is in something? Now we measure length with a ruler, the metre stick, in centimetres, metres, kilometres. We've done weighing with kilograms and grams, and we've done volume as well. We also have a scale for temperature. Now, most of the world uses degree C. The C stands for Celsius or centigrade. Now, you can see from the centigrade you've got the same as centimetre. That will tell you, for those of you that can remember, cent, centi is a hundred. Okay, so in Celsius centigrade, freezing point of water is, who knows? Zero degrees Celsius, good. Zero, zero degrees Celsius or centigrade. The boiling point 
of water. Now these will vary if you're up a very high mountain or extremely low down below sea level, but this is the general understanding. Boiling water, boiling point is 100 degrees. Now this is what is good about Celsius, is that it corresponds with our metric um, ways of using number. Our basic time based number system, 0 to 9 and then 10, this all matches in with that, so it's easy. The maths is easy. If you're trying to do anything with maths with, with Celsius, it's very easy. There is another scale that has been that is used by America and one or two other countries in the world, and it is degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and that for me is not one that I've used. It is the imperial measure. This is the metric. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me because the freezing point, I think, from what I remember, I could be wrong, freezing is 40 degrees Fahrenheit and the boiling point, I'll just put PP, is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so for me, that is too confusing. I know that body temperature is in Celsius 37.5. Four or five. I know that a lot of you will know in Fahrenheit what the what a, a, a normal body temperature is. Okay, but this is generally what's used across the world. Now, what this measures is how hot something is, the heat in that object. Okay, so this is heat in object. It's the kinetic heat. Okay, it's something that is hot. Some of you will be a little bit confused because you will have seen that they said that an iceberg, I know that's not like an iceberg, but pretend that's an iceberg, has got more heat in it than a hot cup of tea. Now, I've just said about centigrade and all the rest of it. This measures, if you took a, temp a thermometer, pretend this is a thermometer, you could put it in your cup of tea, and you could say, oh, it's 85 degrees centigrade, 85 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, and that would tell you what the heat is that's going on there, the moving heat. Remember, there's heat because the atoms are moving faster. The hotter the object, the faster the atoms are moving okay so if it's a cooler if it's a cooler temperature then they're not moving so fast if it's a really hot one then they are moving fast for here if you can go if you can stop the video and ask your parents please may we go and take some cold water and heat it up to boiling point so i can watch the actual process of the transfer of heat then you will, you'll be able to see movement in here before the bubbles, before there's bubbles on the surface, okay? You will see movement. Um, and that's kinetic energy, that's moving energy. In here, the atoms, the, the whole, it's not changing shape, it's not, there's no movement. It's not like boiling water where when it boils you see the movement of the, it's moving because of the atoms. This is very, very solid. The atoms are only vibrating, they're just shaking, they're not really moving. But there are, this is way bigger than one raindrop. So there are gazillion, 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 gazillion atoms in here. Okay, so let's put three and zero, 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 zero. Huge amount of um, atoms, massive amount. And remember, every object has heat in it. Okay, that's one thing. Every object has heat and has heat okay inside and that heat in here inside it can be kinetic which is this or it can be potential remember I think you could be a good footballer I think it's possible I think it might happen this is potential energy it's there it can be used, okay? Potential energy. 
and this is kinetic, okay, because it's hot, hot tea, kinetic. Now, that's got way more atoms, so therefore there's more heat possible in there, so it has more heat. This is tiny, it's absolutely tiny. The amount of atoms compared to here is tiny, so it's got less heat because of the size. Although it's hot, the temperature would give you it would be hot, this has got more heat in it than the cup of tea because the cup of tea is small. So when we measure temperature, it doesn't matter how big or small something is, we are measuring the heat in the object, okay? A hot object. But when we're measuring heat, we are measuring the atom the atom number okay it's telling you how many atoms are in there not precisely but it's that's what you're looking at okay so temperature taking your temperature have, are you hot have you got a temperature think of that this doesn't this is freezer so temperature you would say is freezer but it's got more potential possibly okay so I'm going to stop there have a go with this, have a look at, and you will see how the steam will come up. Uh, try and do it, try and make it cold. Keep it, don't have the fan on, try and make it so that there's no fan on, so the heat does, the, the condensation, the steam does come up and you'll see it, okay. Um, and go and stand in the sun for a moment, in, at your window or outside, and feel the radiation. That is, and tell yourself, this is radiation, this is a way of heat transfer. When you're watching this, tell yourself, this is, con tell your parents, teach someone, this is conduction, this is convection, this is convection, okay? Um, if you teach it, then you will know it. Try and teach someone in your family about atoms and uh, molecules. Atoms are the smallest, molecules are when they connect. And they could, they can connect in all different kinds of combinations. Oxygen can connect with oxygen. They can connect with chlorium, chlorine, they can um, connect with many, many things. If you think about how many different materials we have in this world, they are all made up of atoms that are connected into molecules in different structures. Okay, so next uh, video I will do a little bit more review of what we've done and then that will be our review done of heat. Please do look at this video more than once, okay? Please do write out your own mind map. We're also going to look at the fact that Celsius has also got a scientific scale called the Kelvin scale and Fahrenheit has got a scientific, scientific scale called the Rankine. We'll look at that. You don't really need to know about it, it's just to give you the background. Okay, well done boys and girls.